Hey, what's the crack and welcome to or back to the channel. So last night, DaVinci Resolve 18 public beta was released and it includes quite a few new features across many of the pages in the program. But today I'm taking a look at one that is available on the color page and that is the surface tracker. And what the surface tracker does is it allows you to track the warping of say a material like this t-shirt for example, the material is warping due to movement and you can take that tracking information and then apply it to whatever it is that you're trying to composite to the shot. Really quickly before we jump in, I want to be really clear that this is not a comprehensive tutorial. This is only a first look at this new tool. So everything that I say here should absolutely be taken with a pinch of salt. But with that out of the way, let's jump into this new tool. So the first thing I learned straight away is how to apply the tool to a node correctly. Do not add a new node to your node tree and then drag the open effects onto it because you will not get the additional inputs on that node that you need to make this all work. Instead, you should drag the tool directly onto your node tree here and drop it in. That way it will connect up automatically and it will also ensure that you have those additional inputs that you need. There are four steps to using this tool. There is bounds, mesh, track and result. So let's start with bounds. Another thing I learned very quickly is you don't want to draw a big sloppy boundary like this because when you go to track, Resolve will think it's picking up on viable tracking points that aren't actually viable tracking points and you will result in a very poor track that yields very poor results. So instead, I would urge you to make sure that you spend a little bit of time doing a more precise boundary. Just take the time to make sure that you keep it as tight to viable tracking information as you can. With that done, we can now head over to the mesh options. So here it's done an automatic mesh generation. And to me, this is looking pretty good. And as it turns out, I have gotten reasonable results with this. You can click over on your preview window to drag these points around. So say for example, you were able to see by yourself that there's a fold of material that you could better align these tracking points to that Resolve hasn't picked up on. You can go ahead and do that. And then we also have a uniform grid option where you can alter how many number of points and how spaced out those points are. But just know that the more tracking points that you tell Resolve to have, the longer it will take to perform your track. But then again, it might also yield a more accurate result. We can then come over to our tracking options and I'm just going to run a simple forward and then reverse track. I think the only other thing of note in here is the quality option. I have it by default set to faster. There is a better option here that will take longer, but presumably yield better results. Now we can open our media pool and we'll just drag in whatever image it is that we are looking to composite into this shot. I'm going to select that node and hit Alt S to add a new serial node. Then I will take the first blue output of the first node and connect that to the blue input of our second node. Then from the second node, I'm going to take its green output and connect it to the second green input of our surface tracker, as well as the blue output into the second blue input of the surface tracker. And finally, I'll right click on our mat and I will disable use luminance for alpha output. Next, you'll want to reposition the image so that it looks appropriate. So come back up to your surface tracking node and we'll go over to the results options and we can open up overlay placement. I'm going to change positioning to the sliders option and use a few of the settings in there to get this in the position I want and to get it to align to make it look like it's kind of sat in place correctly. If you want to do some color correction to better color match the image that you're compositing into the shot, you'll want to do it on this node here. Now I'm not doing an extensive color match. I'm just going to do a simple reduction in contrast and a reduction in saturation to show you just how that works. If we come back up to our surface tracker node and open up this compositing option, this is where you get your blending modes. So I'm going to set this to add just again for example's sake, but that's how you will alter the blending modes. 
if you are looking to use the patch tool to clean up the surface so that it's only the composited image showing up, you'll just want to make sure that you do that on a node directly before your surface tracker node. So in this particular node tree, I can either click the surface tracker node and use shift S to add a serial node before, or I can come into the previous node and go Alt S to add a serial node after. As long as you end up with a node before the surface tracker, that's where you can apply the patch tool to and start doing your usual patching work. Now that is an entirely separate tutorial. So I'm just showing you how you would integrate that workflow as opposed to actually carrying that out. And then lastly, if you are now convinced that you're happy that you have successfully blended those two assets together and that it's all looking seamless and you want to continue grading the image, you at this point will want to grade the image as a whole and not accidentally just your overlaid image or your underlaid image. So you'll want to just make sure you start adding nodes after the surface tracker and continue your grade on from there on in. And that way the whole image that is now seamlessly blended together will get affected by those color adjustments. So before I sign off, just some things that I've already learned that I think you should be aware of. And the first thing is the image that you are compositing. Try to get as high resolution an image as you can. I don't know if this will show up over YouTube compression, but I can see on the image here, the edges of my image, which is only 1920 by 1920, are starting to kind of pixelate because there's not a whole lot of resolution for Resolve to play with in terms of how it warps those edges to match the movement of material. Then also, I'm already noticing certain limitations that aren't a surprise, but it's good to know. And that is the tracker seems to fall apart once the material has kind of folded over on itself. And therefore, what started out as a tracking point now ends up being covered up. And speaking of tracking points getting covered up, I think it's very lucky that when I shot this demo clip really quickly, that my hands didn't cross over my main patch of tracking information here. So at the end of the day, this is a tool used to perform a visual effect. And anytime you're doing a visual effect, you should absolutely run the tests, get to know the tool and get to know its limitations. So I'm sure as time goes on, we'll all get to know what we can and can't get away with. That said, for a clip that was shot really quickly and this being my first attempt at using the tool, I think the results are actually quite good and with a bit of refinement I have no doubt that we can all start to pull out very interesting results from this new tool and I look very forward to it. So that's it for today's video. If you found it at all helpful, I really would appreciate if you gave the video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell so that you can see more content just like this. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video. We came to fight.